Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here with TFL. We have some exciting news to go over coming from Buick because today they introduced the first ever Invista crossover. And that's an all new nameplate for the brand. They've never used the Invista nameplate before. It's an all new fastback coupe-like SUV and the price is really surprising. You're gonna wanna stick around to the end of this video to find out how much Buick is charging for this because yeah, the price is gonna surprise you. And this is also the first Buick to adopt the company's new design language. We saw um, a while back the Wildcat EV concept, which was a crazy departure from uh, the Buick design we've gotten to know over the past decade or so. Uh, and this is the first production car to kind of take that design language and bring it into production. So yeah, a lot to cover. And speaking of design language, let's just jump right in and talk about the exterior design. So like I said at the start of this video, clearly a coupe-like SUV or a fastback design. You've got that kind of sporty sloping roof line in the back here, um, but this is a really sleek looking car. I'm gonna say that right off the bat. It's got a low roof. Uh, it's kind of got this forward leaning nose that we saw on the Wildcat EV concept. So um, a lot of those kind of swoopy design features being brought over from that concept into this new Invista. The emblem no longer done in the grill like previous Buick models. It's now integrated right onto uh, the front portion of the body in the sheet metal. And you have this very definitive hard line uh, that comes right through the door handles below the belt line uh, on this vehicle. And it looks really good. Sharp lines, very sleek design, definitely looks like a modern vehicle, uh, not something they kind of revamped from years past. It's definitely all new and I think it looks really good. It's a good looking car. In the back, I talked about that sloping glass, but there's also a really, I don't know if you can even call it a spoiler, but you do have a little bit of a lip there in the back just to give it a little more presence from the back end. And then looking up front, you have what's gonna be Buick's signature uh, moving forward in this new design language. So you've got these checkmark shaped LED running lights. And then the headlights are actually placed below that. We've seen more and more cars take a, a approach like this when it comes to the lighting in the front end of the vehicle where there's um, a running light up top where you would think the headlight would be and then lower down uh, in the bumper is where the actual headlights are gonna be placed. And in many vehicles, that makes a really good difference in how the light is spread at night onto the road. So um, that's the reason a lot of these automakers are doing it. So I would imagine that the lights on this are gonna be pretty good and it should be a good car to drive at night. Uh, some other design elements. Let's talk about the wheels for a second. There are three different trim levels uh, for this new vehicle. We have the base model, which they call preferred, sport touring or ST, and then the top of the line Avenir. Uh, and then basically for wheels, you're gonna get 17 inch wheels standard. 18 inch wheels are gonna be standard on the ST. Uh, 19 inch wheels are available. And on the Avenir model, you get these um, bespoke pearl nickel wheels, which look pretty good. Power wise, let's talk about the engine. 1.2 liter turbocharged inline three cylinder engine. So it's a little baby three cylinder. Uh, this car was unveiled for other markets a few months ago. It had a bigger 1.6 liter in it. So unfortunately here for the States, we're getting a smaller 1.2 liter turbo, but uh, it is what it is. Six speed automatic transmission. And as far as power goes, it's not gonna be breaking any records, 136 horsepower and 162 foot-pounds of torque. Front wheel drive only configurations. So if you want all wheel drive, you're gonna have to look elsewhere in Buick's lineup, um, like the Encore GX, for example. Um, but Buick does say that this version of this 1.2 liter engine is a little different than previous versions. It's lighter weight, uses fewer parts, and that should lead to more efficiency. As far as efficiency goes, Buick did put out some numbers on this. 28 city, 32 highway, and 30 miles per gallon combined which definitely isn't terrible, but with a tiny little engine like this, you'd think efficiency would be the main goal in mind. And those numbers aren't really breathtaking. So um, a little bit of a bummer there for me, at least I would love to see um, one or the other, either a little more performance or if you're gonna kind of tame down the engine, make it a little 1.2 liter turbo with only 136 horsepower, I'd expect 
uh, some better fuel economy out of it. So I think out of everything, that's kind of the biggest disappointment in this whole vehicle. Um, but I think that gets saved by the price, which like I said, we're gonna get to at the end of this. Uh, as far as suspension goes too, there's two different setups. Torsion beam rear suspension is standard, but you can get a Watts link suspension on the ST model and that's standard on the highest end trim. Uh, and that's gonna lead to a more quiet and isolated and better handling ride. All right, now peeking to the inside of the Invista, it looks like a really nice interior with modern touches. So first of all, we'll just talk about the screens. You have two screens right up front for a combined 19 inches of screen real estate an 11 inch infotainment system right there in the center, just like the Encore GX, and then an eight inch digital gauge cluster right in front of the driver with everything you could want. Uh, and I think that's really cool, especially on a lower cost vehicle like this to still get full digital displays in front of the driver. That's a big win for Buick. Flat bottom steering wheel, which is a little unique in this segment. Um, not too many other vehicles are offering that. And you do get some nice premium touches depending on what trim you get. So colored stitching, depending on what trim you're going with. And then if you get the ST or the Avenir trims, you're gonna have embroidered headrests as well. There's also quiet tuning system, which is available. That's something Buick's been doing across a lot of their vehicles, um, which is a combination of glass that they're using and uh, different sound isolation materials in the doors and some tech going on through the sound system to make it much quieter on the inside. You'll hear less engine noise and wind noise and make it sound like a more luxury vehicle when you're on the inside, which is great. Rear seats, 60-40 uh, rear split. Buick says you'll be able to store items that are seven and a half feet long diagonally in the rear of the vehicle. Um, and you do have decent storage space. It is, like I said, got that sloping back to it. So um, it's not gonna be the full on storage space you'd get if it were a full boxy SUV, but it is respectable. 20.7 cubic feet of space in the rear. And that goes up to 42 cubic feet of space if you fold the rear seats down. Uh, there's also some convenience packages. So. Buick driver confidence package is standard, which comes, and that's across all trims, that comes with automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist with lane departure warning, and auto high beams. There's some more things that go into that as well. And then there's some more available optional driver safety packages. So lane change alert with uh, blind zone alert, adaptive cruise control, and rear cross traffic alert are all gonna be available options. There's pretty much a rundown of the exterior design, the interior, the powertrain, basically everything you need to know. Like I said, I think it's a really sleek looking vehicle. It's different than what we've seen coming out of Buick for d the past decade or so. Uh, and I think it's a really sharp looking car. And I think, uh, especially with the price, it's going to sell pretty well. Let's talk about that price. Starts at 23,495, so under $24,000 for a premium SUV with decent storage space, good modern tech, um, and a really good design, which I think is a killer price. The Encore GX for comparison uh, starts at $25,900. So this being, you know, that coupe design and an all new um, model, all new bodywork, all new interior is actually $2,400 cheaper than the Encore GX. So that's uh, pretty surprising and good on Buick for being able to do that. Um, there's also, like I said, three trims. So the, the preferred, the base model is that 23495 I just mentioned. If you jump up to the Sport Touring model, that goes up to $25,195. And then the Top Dog Avenir starts at $29,695. So um, just like other Buick models, the, the top is still gonna be that Avenir to follow the rest of their trims and the, the models in their lineup, but to get the fully loaded top model for under $30,000 is really impressive. Um, little bit odd that 
Buick is announcing this when they are. They did recently commit to an all EV lineup by 2030, um, but I guess it kind of does make sense. This vehicle, by the time they're gonna shoot for that 2030 all EV lineup, this will probably be right at the end of its life cycle. So I guess the timing does kind of make sense, but um, we're still waiting for some more electric Buicks to come out and they should be right around the corner. So keep your eyes peeled for those. I'm hoping this uh, this vehicle really helps Buick in sales. Um, they had a rough year last year. They were down 42% from 2021. Uh, in 2022, they had 103,000 units sold um, compared to almost 180,000 units sold in 2021. So they were down quite a bit last year and hopefully an entry level model like this with really impressive pricing starting uh, in the low $20,000 range will really help them uh, bump up sales. So there you have it. Everything you need to know about the all new 2024 Buick and Vista. Uh, it's going to enter production next month and it'll be available here in the US this summer. So right around the corner. Let me know what you think of this down in the comments below and check out alttfl.com so you don't miss anything in the car world. I'll catch you in the next video.